are two issues that we want to address, and that's why we have brought you here. So thank you once again for coming. Without wasting time, a few weeks ago, before Parliament went on recess, the minority put out um, a news release that government was owing suppliers of uh, various items, including food items, uh, stationery, tablets, and all that in the chain of over 6 billion Ghanaians. We were expecting government, especially the Minister of Education, to come out and deny it. Uh, we did not hear from them. At the launch of the manifesto, they mentioned that they had distributed 900,000 tablets to senior high schools as part of the free SHS program. I listened to another speaker who said 90,000. So I don't know which is which. In our press release about uh, six or so weeks ago, we indicated that it's a program that, uh, as a party NDC, we support very much. But where you are not prepared for it, you don't have any budget allocation, and you go in, into it, you create a problem for the suppliers. As we sit here, we know that 1,358,000 tablets were procured. And the supplier had to look for a loan, a dollar denominated cities. That means that any time he's going to pay the loan back, they will calculate the risk. If it is 18 cities to the dollar, that is what we'll have to pay. He has been denied payment for a very long time now. And we don't know why government is refusing to pay. Now, when this issue came up in Parliament, uh, as part of the uh, approval of the formula for get fund, government was going to shift the payment to get fund. And as a committee of education, we resisted and recommended that the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Education should take up that payment. And we remember very well that Speaker wrote to the Minister for Finance to take up the payment for 900,000 tablets. And this has not been done. So our concern here is why is government refusing to pay for the tablets such that you are killing the business of the supplier? We will also want to know from government how many schools have received the tablets so far and what number of students have received the tablets so far? Because you cannot be making noise out of it that you have supplied tablets to secondary schools. Meanwhile, I know that the secondary school in my constituency, a very senior high school, has not received it. Meanwhile, I know that the secondary school in my deputy's uh, constituency, Bursa South, has not received it. So what are we trying to tell Ghanaians? So we are demanding from government answers to why they are not paying supplier, they are killing businesses, including that of the supplier of the tablets. Additionally, at the launch, they mentioned that government has paid for the registration of basic education certificate examination candidates for 2024. If you remember very well, it took this minority to talk about the payment for the registration to enable WIAC conduct the BEC for 2024. So, at the time, government had to release 55.9 million out of over 200 million that they owe WIAC. 
So I don't understand, or we don't know why at the launch they will claim that they had paid. If they say they had even absorbed, that would have been better that they have paid for the registration of DEC candidates. As we speak now, WAIC had to postpone the marking of DEC scripts from this month to September because they don't have the funds to do the coordination and marking, which we call post-examination activities. They still owe uh, WAIC for the DEC, and we are demanding that government pays this money to WIDEC so that they can organize the marking in time. As a result, the school calendar is going to be disrupted again. Those who are to go to SHS this September will be at home. They will not be able to go. So it is likely that the academic calendar is going to be disrupted again and they may go to school somewhere in December which we are trying to avoid. And you know the effect of the double track that is having on the school calendar in progress now. So we are asking government to release money to WAEC as urgently as they can so that the marking can take place for our young ones to enter secondary school in good time. I'll end here and ask my deputy to add a few more points. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Hankin, for giving me the opportunity uh, to highlight the issues that you have just uh, stated. We don't have a problem with the provision of tablets for our students in secondary school, as Rankin indicated. In fact, our NDC 2020 manifesto also indicated that if we were given the opportunity, we would have executed a similar policy. Indeed, we believe that the ex-while John Mama NDC administration was executing a similar policy. But what is the point in making claims that are not true? Why do you announce to the whole world that you have procured and supplied 900,000 tablets when that is not the case? And why is government, through the ministry, failing to do the needful, even as requested by the Speaker of Parliament. And you see, the problem we have is this. This MPP government is clearly going to leave governance with a huge debt in the education sector, not only within the context of the tablets, but we know that they also own suppliers of food items, suppliers of school uniforms, suppliers of sports apparel, and even stationery. So the point we want to make is this. Government needs to be honest, sincere, and transparent in what it does and what it has not done. So if this government wants Ghanaians to take it seriously, then it must meet its obligations to all the suppliers. On the issue of YB, it is a shame. And we must all be embarrassed that our government owes YB to the extent that YB is incapable of fulfilling its obligations as far as its core duties are concerned. And make no mistake, the further disruption of the academic calendar is not going to bode well for the education of our young ones. Now remember, BEC 
is in arrears in terms of the amount that government is supposed to pay. What he has said, your guess is as good as mine. The implications of a delay in the marking and release of the results of BEC and what is going to happen when the WASI exams are over. It is the same way still hope that is going to have to deal with the outcome of what government is planning to do. So we believe it is our responsibility to draw attention to these issues with the hope that government will do the need for. A government that can find money in excess of 300 million Ghana cities ostensibly to construct a cathedral. A government that can give away about $12 million to a contractor with no work done at the Balubu Dam. A government that can employ a CEO and a staff for the construction of the Kata port for seven years, for what we have seen that certainly must be able to find the money to address these very pressing issues. And these are the issues that Ghanaians care about. We'll leave it here, and if you have any questions, we will respond. Thank you. Can I ask a question outside of this? Wish that uh, you re you restrict the questions to what is uh, on the table. Yeah. As, I, as I said earlier, this is the first engagement. We'll be finalizing whatever they have said in the manifesto of our education is concerned. Uh, in a few days again. So this is the first uh, engagement. Okay, if there are no questions. I'm sure the message has gone down well. Uh, you carry it to uh, the public. Uh, we are with the public, and uh, we want justice to be done. See, we don't want businesses to be killed in this country. We must encourage the young ones to engage in uh, business. Uh, this government says uh, the private sector is the engine of uh, growth. So if that is so, why do we punish or prevent them from progressing uh, in their businesses? So thank you very much. We will call you again within the next few days for another segment so that um, we can discuss the manifesto. We are also launching our work on um, Saturday, and uh, we hope that when we have done that, we will meet again for further discussion. Thank you very much. I have a good day.